Hello, my name is Ian, and today I wanted to share with you how I took this shot and made it like this. Now, it's a pretty subtle difference, but I thought it added a lot of interest and kind of motivation for this guy who's just walking out into the middle of a field. Why is he doing that? Well, maybe he's trying to get somewhere. And yes, it is very much inspired by Simon Stolenhag. Before I get too deep into things, I wanted to let you know that I've created a free training for you where I share the five techniques that will immediately make your visual effects seamless. And there's a link in the description to find that, so open it up in a new tab if you're interested. Okay, we're recording. Hopping into Blender. So here's the scene that I used. Fairly simple. And if we select the camera and go into the camera properties and enable background images, that was very helpful to me to kind of get the composition of where I wanted these huge buildings to be in the background. And it's a really simple scene. You can see for the environment, I just made that a little bit brighter. And there's no materials on these. The only other couple things I did was I went into the render properties down into film and I checked transparent so that they were on a transparent layer here. And the other thing I did was I went into the view layer properties and down under crypto mat, I enabled object. So that'll allow us to differentiate between these two objects when we're compositing. The other thing I did in more 2D space was I went into the movie clip editor and I just created a really basic soft mask for the skyline of where I kind of wanted these things to stop appearing because there were trees in the way. So I kind of wanted them to fade out along this line. And I just created a really simple mask and using Alt S, I feathered it out just to get a soft gradient on this mask. Then, in compositing, you can see this gets a little bit more tricky, but let's just start with the basics. I'm going to render out this scene. So this is the final result here. You can see these guys are just off in the background, so pretty subtle. If we go back into the compositor and I make this full screen, I'll show you what the process I took was. First off, we're starting with our alpha layer of these two giant buildings, and I wanted these to be the right colors. So what I did was I took the original movie clip here, and I dropped in a mix shader, and I just wanted to get the range in between these dark trees and this snowy sky. So for the top color, I got this eyedropper tool and just selected the background. And then for the bottom color, I selected the foreground. And this gives us a range of all of the colors in between those two values from darker to something a little bit lighter. And this ended up being a really handy trick for me for describing the values of these. So if I just take a look here, we've got our original layers that's going into a mix node. And what this mix node does is it takes the alpha value, which you can see like this, it's just this white part here. And it's saying, I want these white parts to be whatever color is going into the bottom of this mix node. And you can see our image is going into the top like this. And then it's mixing to be this color. And I decided it looks pretty good to have them at this value here. And you can just slide this back and forth to have them be lighter or darker. And once again, the changes here were pretty subtle. So I wanted to feed this mix shader into an alpha over node with the original movie clip going into the top of the alpha over. And then these were just pasting right on top of everything like this. And using this slider of the colors, I figured this was about the right color for me because I didn't want it to be quite the background color, and I didn't want it to be as dark as the foreground color. I guess I should probably be using the word value, not color, because there isn't really that much color data going on here. It's basically just black and white. But with this setup of the movie clip and the mix shader, I could really see what colors were correct. I wanted this smaller one to look like it was farther back, so I wanted it to be lighter, because the farther back in the scene, the lighter objects would get. So that's when the crypto mat we enabled earlier came into play. And you can see here, if I just look at this node, it's saying, oh, here's this object and it's isolated. So the way we set this node up, if we go shift A down to mat and add in a crypto mat here, let's take the object output. And you get these outputs when you enable the crypto mat back in the view layer settings. And we put that into the image on this node. Let's just take a look at what we get here. When I view pick with our viewer node here, you can see there's a couple of colors here. And the way we select one of these objects in our scene is we hit the plus button on the mat ID here, and we can actually pick a color. I'm going to pick this one since it's the object I want to isolate. And once I've done that, 
and I look at the mat output here, you can see we've got our mat that is just that object, which is pretty sweet. If we went back to pick and we wanted to get another object, for example, there's only two in this scene, but we could hit plus once more and select this one. And that adds it to the mat. Hey, that's pretty cool. And we could take out the original by just probably subtracting it here. Now we only have the bigger building. And by the way, we want to make sure our current scene is enabled here. You can get some funky stuff if you don't do that. Okay, so that's how the crypto mat works. Now we can take this mix node and go shift D to duplicate it, grab it, and let's drop in another one of these colors, but we want a different color. We want a brighter color, so let's duplicate this. Drop it in the bottom slot here, and let's slide it a little bit towards something brighter. We'll dial that in a little bit later. And let's take our mat that we just created and put it into the factor. And now you can see, oh, well, maybe you can't see. It's a little bit tricky to see. If we slide this all the way to the left, this object is going to be brighter than the larger object. And if we slide it all the way to the right, it's going to get to be this darker color here. And it's only working on this smaller building because we've got our mat going into the factor here. As you can see, we got this bright white outline, which just really doesn't look very good. And I think that's a result of the crypto mat. So let's just take this and do a little bit of a subtraction. We're going to go into filter, dilate erode, and put this right on top of the mat. And if we set this to be negative one, the mat gets a little bit smaller which could throw things off, but I found that it kind of helps with that little outline edge that we get. So looking back at the alpha over here, it's not perfect, but it's much better than it was before. Cool. So let's do a little bit more to make these look like they're far in the background. As you can see by this telephone post, as you get farther into the snow, things get a lot blurrier just because there's a lot more going on in the atmosphere between us and them. So let's go and add in a blur filter. So filter, Blur. And I found that a value of about 10 looks pretty good in these slots. So let's just put that in. And holy cow, you can see our nasty edges totally disappear and they really start to blend into the background. Okay, so that's looking pretty good. But now, as you can see, and you've probably noticed, they're in front of the tree line and we want them to be behind it. So let's work on some magic for that. For the movie clip, let's just drag this out and with Blender 2.31, we can just drag it out and drop it. It'll add in a search dialog box, which is pretty cool. Let's type in ramp, see if that gets us to a color ramp. Very nice. <laughs> That's a cool feature. Okay, so let's view this color ramp. I'm holding control, shift, and clicking on the image output here. And that's with the Node Wrangler add-on enabled, just so you're aware. Now we can start going ahead and crunching up these values. As we turn up the black values, and maybe crunch down the white values a little bit, we start to get this kind of black and white mask of where the tree line is. It's a little bit fiddly. There we go, something like that's halfway decent. Probably want to ease up on the black values a little bit here. Okay, so just adjusting that a little bit gets us this result. And as our character walks into frame, a little bit down the line in the animation, you can see since there was so much snow in the background, we get a perfect mask of the character in the foreground, which is absolutely beautiful. This would take so much work to mask out by hand. Okay, so if we take this and drop the image output into the factor input of our alpha over here and take a look, you can see our giant buildings are behind everything, which is fantastic. But you can also see the bottom of them are kind of poking through the bottom of the tree line into the field, and we shouldn't be able to see that. So let's just drop in that quick mask that we created. So I'm gonna go Shift A, Input, and Mask. Let's just select our mask that we created, and I'm gonna mix this with the output of the color ramp. So let's just drag that out and type in Mix. There we go. And instead of having that go into the factor, let's just drop it into the bottom image and take the mask and drop that into the top image. And if we take a look at what we're doing here, it's just mixing back and forth in between these two images. So let's change that a little bit. Let's switch it from mix to be multiply. And now when we turn up the factor, we get this crazy result, which we don't really want. Let's make it so the black part of our mask is actually at the bottom and the white part is at the top by adding in an invert. So shift A, 
color and invert. Here we go. Now dropping that into the multiply node, if we take a look at that, we get a very nice clean mask of the trees and the bottom. And this is looking pretty good. So if we drag this out, and instead of taking the output from the color ramp into the alpha over, let's take the output of the multiply into the factor. And viewing this, hey, that's looking better. We don't see the bottoms of the buildings anymore, and they're pretty nicely in the background. Cool. So now our buildings are sitting nicely in our shot, and we have a lot of control over which one is at which value. So if we wanted to make it seem like the smaller one was closer, we could change this value to be darker, which is pretty cool. And then the bigger one is farther away because it's a little bit brighter. And we can fine tune these the way we want to, but I find that if the closer one is a bit darker than the farther one, that makes a lot more sense in the scene. Cool, so that's our finished shot. Once again, if you're interested in learning the five techniques that will immediately help to make your visual effect seamless, there's a link in the description, so check that out. Besides that, if you're curious about how to bring a CG character to life, there's this video here. And if you're feeling more like learning about digital set extensions, then check out this video here. <laughs>